Today, I'm going to be discussing and showing some newspaper headlines and clippings on the mob. Speaking of newspapers, Mark Twain made the following quote regarding them. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. A proven fact about newspapers is when the headlines are mafia-related, there's a vast increase in sales. This is mostly due to the average person being intrigued by the mob. So let's take a look at some newspaper headlines and articles. On Valentine's Day, February 14, 1929, seven members of the Bugs Moran gang were mowed down by Thompson submachine guns in a Lincoln Park garage in North Chicago. Despite the fact that no one's ever been prosecuted for that massacre, it has always been widely speculated that Al Capone and the Chicago mob carried it out. Bugs Moran happened to be a rival of Al Capone. In May 1936, Lucky Luciano went on trial for prostitution and was ultimately convicted on June 7, 1936. Luciano was sentenced to 30 to 50 years, a sentence that was commuted in January 1946 when Luciano was deported back to Italy the following month. Abe Kid Twist Reles was a member of Murder, Inc. who became a government witness. On November 12, 1941, he was in the Half Moon Hotel in Coney Island, Brooklyn, and while on the police guard, he mysteriously fell out of the window to his death. As you could see, the headlines state that he plunged while trying to escape. According to Joe Valachi, he had the following to say about that. I never met anybody who thought Abe went out that window because he wanted to. Albert Anastasia was shot to death on October 25, 1957, while in a barber chair at the Park Sheridan Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. The following month, the historical Appalachian meeting took place on November 14, 1957, and was attended by bosses across the United States. Law enforcement broke that meeting up, sending men running into the woods while arresting many others. As a result of the Appalachian meeting, as well as trying to prevent the infiltration of informers, the books were closed in 1957, which prevented the induction of new members, and they were reopened in 1976, and as you could see, somehow the newspapers became aware of this. On April 4, 1959, Vito Genovese was convicted of conspiracy for narcotics trafficking. In 1963, Joe Valachi, who we just mentioned, a member of the Genovese family, became the first person to expose the existence of the mafia. Joe Colombo was shot on May 22, 1978, while at an Italian Unity Day rally in Manhattan's Columbus Circle. Prior to this, the former Profaci family was dealing with an internal war between the Gallo brothers and Joe Profaci. The outcome of that war came to a head on April 7, 1972, while Joe Gallo was out celebrating his birthday at Umberto's Clam House in Manhattan's Little Italy, where he was shot to death. On October 15, 1976, a rarity in the mob took place with the death of Carlo Gambino, who died in his bed. The majority of bosses either end up dead or in prison. Years ago, there was a point in time when even the director of the FBI denied the existence of the mafia. This article states the opposite. On December 11, 1978, the infamous heist took place in Lufthansa's cargo area at John F. Kennedy Airport, where somewhere in a neighborhood of $5 million in cash and about $800,000 in jewelry was stolen. On July 12, 1979, Carmine Galante was dining in Joe and Mary's Italian restaurant in Bushwick, Brooklyn. At some point, a hit team entered the restaurant's courtyard where Galante was sitting with a group of people and killed everyone there but two, which happened to be his bodyguards. As you could see in this article, they were wanted for questioning. Philadelphia family captain Salvi Testa was found on the side of a New Jersey road shot to death on September 14, 1984, after falling from grace with the boss Nicky Scarfo. In 1984, specifically on April 8, 1984, 40 people were arrested for an international narcotics operation. Law enforcement claimed that from 1975 to 1984, $1.6 billion worth of heroin was shipped to the United States and distributed. There was also the commission case, where members of the commission and others were indicted and ultimately convicted on November 19, 1986. The newspapers enjoyed announcing who the alleged new boss of the family was. Like, for instance, Alphonse Persico, who took over for his father, Carmine Persico. Barney Belomo, 
had taken over for Chin Gigante. Gigante's arrest, while wearing his famous bathrobe, was a big deal for the media. And John Gotti replacing Paul Castellano, whose murder was plastered all over newspaper covers. Also making the news was the car bombing of Gotti's underboss, Frankie DeChico, who was killed on April 13, 1986. The media jokingly listed Lucchese members who were straightened out in 1991 and displayed how all of the five, with the exception of one who passed away, were arrested on one case or another. John Gotti filled the pages of many of newspapers, especially after his final arrest in December of 1990. And then when his underboss began cooperating with the government, the newspapers had a lot of fun with that. They also covered Gotti's 1992 conviction, which was front page news in most newspapers. They also posted a not so flattering picture of Gotti after his getting the bad end of a prison fight. They poked a lot of fun at his son, John Jr., and more so following his meeting with the FBI, where he divulged crimes committed by others in a session titled Queen for the Day. Of course, John Gotti's death on June 10, 2002, were big headlines as well. Making headlines in 1991 was the internal war within the Colombo family. The more bodies that piled up in the street came at the elation to news reporters who had more material to print. It seems that newspapers revel with headlines that scream mob murder. Those are definitely headlines that catch people's eye or piques their interest. The media also covered the downfall of the Lucchese family in the early 90s, especially with the defection of the family's underboss, Gaspipe Castle. One front page highlighted the disgraceful attempted hit on Patricia Capazzalo, the sister of Picciotto, who was shot in March of 1992. In March of 2001, the two detectives who won the Lucchese payroll were charged with not only providing sensitive information, but with committing murders on behalf of the family. Their conviction obviously made front page news as well. The newspapers and media loved Chin Gigante, who pranced around the west side of Manhattan in his traditional bathrobe. The unfortunate murder of Gambino boss Frank Cali, which took place on March 13, 2019, was very big news as well. Let me quickly mention the super thanks icon found beneath this video in the three dot drop down for anyone who'd like to show appreciation for videos such as this. Overall, members of the mob years ago went out of their way to avoid publicity, such as having their names or photos appear in the newspaper. They understood that attention or being cast in the spotlight never turns out well. It seems the more media attention a person gets, even attention that's unavoided, is viewed by the government as that person thumbing their nose at them. In turn, the government gets the FBI to widen the bullseye on that person's back. As members of a secret society, their duty is to remain in the shadows and do everything within their power to protect the organization. Throughout the years, the media outlets and their reporters have done their due diligence at exposing the mafia and its members. And whether unknowingly or fully aware, their work at times has assisted in putting people in prison, or in some instances, even played a role in getting people killed. There was a saying in the street, if they put you in the paper, you're going to the can. 